Schaefer will maybe pass, and look for him to pa if he does pass, look for him to pass on first down. Maybe even try a big play. Drew Bowers, uh, you know, because I had had a big catch. I think he, I think he just needs some more balls thrown his yeah. way. I think I think Drew is, has a potential to be have, be have a really good season, but I think you need to test maybe this Whitco secondary a little bit. They they're prone to giving up big plays. Well, let's talk about the Whitco offense a little bit as well. Uh, Crew Ebbinghaus, the quarterback uh, for the Whitco Wildcats, and what does Crew have? Well, just a sophomore, but you look at Crew's stats, his completion percentage doesn't jump out at you. But man, when he does complete a pass, it goes for big yards, 40 yards of completion. I mean, they get big plays. Watch out for uh, Harmon, Riley Harmon, number two. He is a big play waiting to happen. And uh, Friel uh, is a big, is very big, 45. Friel, uh, he's their tailback, 6'1", 175, runs hard. Uh, and he is a guy also capable of big plays in both the, the ground game and in the passing attack. If you're a Rochester fan, who has to have a good game tonight? Offensively, and who has to have a good game defensively? Do you agree with what Coach Schaefer said? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm right with him, and especially what he said about um, X using his hands. It sounds like he really um, sees him as being a big factor. We, we you know, saw him. I mean, he threw down Grady Moriarty last week. That is <laughs> not easy you know, to do. You know how strong you have to be to yeah. do that. I mean, so he could be a really big factor. And, and if Whitco has to double team X, then then that will let Callum Verbiter run yeah. wild potentially, because I mean. Uh, that's that you know that's what the zebras want to do they want to create matchup problems for you in the front line where you're learning okay who do we block here and who do we double team and who do we not double team starting lineups brought to you by jennings insurance and argus and rochester going beyond the expected for you Let's take a look at the Three Rivers Conference as it stands here as we head into week three at the top. Obviously, just one week for everybody playing. Week number one, uh, everybody played as the coin toss is taken. And the Zebras will take the ball first. So the Zebras will be on offense as we get ready to get started. But uh, it's kind of split in half right now. Northwestern, McConaughey, Cass, Peru, Rochester at the top, all 1-0. Manchester, Northfield, Southwood, Wabash, Whitco at the bottom at 0-1. So you're going to start seeing some separation after tonight uh, as uh, the teams you know either go 2 and 0 or 1 and 1 or 0 and 2 in addition to this game Manchester's at Wabash so mm -hmm. somebody's going to get a first conference win there Northfield at McConaughey tonight. More Northfield suffered a heartbreaker yeah. last week. Had to come back on Saturday and then lost to Lewis Cass. And they're going to take on three. a uh, very air-rated McConaughey team. Yeah, they're, they're, yeah, you're right. If your pass defense has to be ready to go when you face the Braves. Peru at Lewis Cass. You know, Peru got the win over Whitco last week. Back on the road this week. And then um, Southwood at Northwestern. Southwood 0-2 and Northwestern 2-0 and playing well. Yeah. Scoring a lot of points. That's going to do it for the pregame, brought to you again by Fulton County REMC. Time now for the kickoff of tonight's broadcast, brought to you by Odell Lumber, your locally owned building supplier. As we get ready to go and get the clock all set, glad you could join us here on Giant FM and RTC TV 4 as the Zebras opt to take the ball first here in tonight's contest. I like it. Uh, I like it. I Again, I... I know everybody seems to defer, yeah. but I like receiving and betting on your offense to score first because, boy, when you do, it makes a big deal. Riley Harmon kicks it away, and it'll be taken by Jewel at the 20-yard line. Jewel has it. Maddox Jewel brings it back up. He'll get across the 30 into about the – going to mark him about the 30 – let's see where they end up marking, about the 37. It looks like about the 37-yard line. And that's where the Zebras will take over first and 10 for their first time here this evening. And Colton Gerald made the tackle, and that might have been a touchdown-saving <laughs> tackle. He was one tackle away from breaking it for really big yards. Polly comes set out of the huddle, brings everybody up to the line. but twins to the near side. Beck is behind him. Man goes in motion. They pitch it back to Beck. Beck comes to the near side. Beck lowers his head, still on his feet. Going to be knocked out of bounds on the Zebra sidelines as he gets across the 40, crosses the 45. We're going to mark him right about the 45, it looks like. Oh. About a five-yard pickup. We'll give him second and five now for the Zebras at the 42. Zebras had a lot of success running around the perimeter. Drew Bowers goes split to the top. Against Valley, and that's Zebras, a good sign. Zebras going left to right. They fake the pitch. They go right back up the middle. That's Beck again, and Beck is going to be near the first down marker. And the spot on this near side looks like he should have plenty of yards to get it. 
And he does. And a, the first first down of the night brought to you by Steve Moore Agency. Small town, big service. Zebra, first down. Ball City now just shy of midfield, about the 48-yard line. And that's the thing about Brand. You can run him outside, and then you can run that counter yeah. inside. Bowers goes to the near or far side again. Kai Murphy uh, in a, got the start tonight. Murphy back there. Now Beck again, this time around the left side. He's got a hole. He crosses the 45 of the Wildcats. Falls forward, and he's going to be down about the 42-yard line. Going to be close to another first down. And the official here says first down. And your referee looks at it, and it is confirmed. Another Steve Moore agency first down. Belly. Belly, back-to-back first downs for the Zebras. Zebras coming out real quick, but unfortunately, Chain's not ready to go on a slow call there. So now we'll get ready to go. Zebras at the line. Bowers this time to the near side on the Zebra sideline. Pollock up under center. Quick snap, rolls out, looks to throw, throws it up into the air for Bowers. Bowers got room underneath, makes a catch into the end zone. Touchdown. Touchdown, Zebra. 42-yard touchdown pass. Pollock to Bowers with 11.01 to go in the opening quarter. Just perfect timing on the fade. Put plenty of air underneath that ball, and once Drew ran underneath it, he got a step on the defender. Dylan Cassidy was in coverage, but he did not have any safety help. And uh, Davis Reaney will come in for the extra point. Holder is Carson Pollock. Kick is up, and it is through the uprights. Good. And the Zebras take the early lead. Seven to nothing on the Fulton County Solid Waste District Scoreboard. We'll be back. We'll recap that drive for you after this. Giant FM and RTC TV 4. That scoring drive being brought to you by, excuse me, Rochester Ford, home of the lifetime oil chains. Val, the scoring drive for the Zebras. Four plays, 63 yards. It took 59 seconds. Drew Bowers with a 42-yard pass from Carson Pollock for the touchdown. Davis Reaney's PAT was good, and Rochester leads Whitco 7-0 with 11-01 to go in the first quarter. Well, here is Davis Reaney for the Odell Lumber kickoff. Back deep for Whitco is a trio of returners. And Reaney kicks a little short one. It'll hit at about the 25-yard line. Going to be picked up by number two. That's Riley Harmon. Harmon takes it to the far sideline. Harmon's got some room. Finally going to be slowed down and knocked out of bounds by Davis Reaney. A great wall that time by the Whitco Wildcats yeah. as Harmon picked it up on this near side, and he just took off for the far sideline and had some room. Harmon's their best athlete, I think, and the wall was set up well. It was weird. It was he handled it. I don't know if he was supposed to pick it up on one hop. That's usually <laughs> not the plan, but got into zebra territory. They're marking him at the 48. Pretty good field position for the Wildcats' first possession of the game. So the Wildcats will come set up under center. Eben House in the backfield behind him will be Smith. And we got a penalty right off the bat. I don't even think anybody came set yet, but we do have a penalty marker already. Dead ball, and it's going to be against procedure against Whitco. All right, didn't realize we were ready to start. They're going to be first and 15. I was called on the bus driver for not parking in the right. Jeez, that was quick. <laughs> that was a, a quick whistle. So here we go. We'll have a first Usually and 15. Talk about in basketball or something. Up under center. Comes the handoff, and that's going to be to Harmon, and Harmon goes nowhere with it. In fact, another uh, couple yard loss. Nope. Yeah, that would be 23, Mr. excuse me. That was 23. Cassidy. Cassidy. Yeah, that would be Mr. Xavier Vance, who yeah. got in the backfield in a hurry. He did. And that was, yeah, made me just think it was two instead of 23. It happened so fast. So uh, Dylan Cassidy there lost another two yard loss. That'll bring up second and 17 now. So they are now pushing them the other way back into their own territory. 7 nothing already. Zebra scored with 11-01 to go here in this first quarter. So this is the usual crew that we're used to seeing in defensive end with 
Heisey on one side and Clark at the other, but we'll see shots at some point, we believe. Rollback, that's a different quarterback. We'll have to check that. That's Harmon as they came out with a different quarterback here. And that was Ebbinghouse. Okay, it was Crew Ebbinghouse. Okay, we've got him a different name, number here on this uh, starter sheet that I had. <laughs> well, that was a nice pass. We're talking about Ebbinghouse completing less than 25% of his passes, but that was right where it needed to be. And a first down for the Wildcats. Back into Zebra territory. Ball down at about the 35-yard line. First and 10. Ebbinghouse up under center. Harmon comes to the near side. He's got a man split to the far. Ebbinghouse looking to throw again. Comes to his near side this time. He's hit as he throws it, and it's incomplete. Thrown behind uh, Harmon that time. So it'll be second and ten as Ebbinghouse, I think, felt the pressure and had to get rid of it. And well, it looked like Ebbinghouse was just determined to get the ball to Harmon. Friel, yeah. Friel was out there in the flat. He was open. Um, but he was just determined to throw the ball to Harmon. And he kept his eyes on Harmon, and the Zebras recognized that too. Ebbinghouse uh, back under center. Now they come to the near side with Hepler. They hand it off back up the middle, and that's going to go nowhere for the Wildcats, maybe back to the line of scrimmage. And that was 35, Landon Smith. Smith gets back to the line of scrimmage. That'll bring up third and ten. Nice play by Bailey. To, he shut down that hole quickly. So third and ten now for the Wildcats. Randy and Val here in the opening quarter. First possession for the Zebras. They score. First possession for the Wildcats. They've got one first down so far. And they have it now third and 10 from the Zebra 36-yard line, 34-yard line. Quick out. They go to out to Harmon again. Harmon comes to the near side. Pursuit is there, but I do see a host of flags on the field. And we're going to have a penalty marker against the Wildcats. So Rochester... Will they decline it, or will they? I think they'll be fourth and one if they decline it. And the Zebras will take the penalty, so they'll push them back. So the penalty against the Wildcats are second of the night. So they'll take it from the original line of scrimmage. So now it'll be third and 15. So play comes in from the sideline from Hepler. Ebbinghouse up under center. He gets everybody in position. Behind him is Smith. Ebbinghouse. And Harmon's also an outstanding baseball player at Whitco. He's really good. Sends a man in motion. He gets the handoff. That is Cassidy. Goes around the right side. Cassidy's going to be forced out of bounds. Gets a few of those yards back on the penalty, but it's going to bring up fourth and long now for the Whitco Wildcats. Big decision here early in the contest for the Wildcats. Well, I'm guessing that Coach Sprunger has kind of already made up. If you call that play on third and 15, it probably means you're going for it on a fourth. Fourth and nine. And it looks like they will go for it. I mean, House probably going to step back and try to air it out here. As he brings Harmon back in, he'll split him to the far side. Ebbinghouse puts Cassidy in motion. They fake it to him. Now they step back. Here comes pressure. Throw it up the middle. It's going to be complete. And that is to Harmon. Harmon's going to have enough for a first down and more. Nice slant right across the middle. And he nailed Harmon in stride. And another first down for the Wildcats. Yeah, nice. Nice pattern. He basically ran right across the front of the zebra yeah. the zone. Look like and only oh, no, be first and ten now with the clock rolling. 7:25 to go here in this opening quarter. Two receptions for 33 yards for Harmon early going plus a big kickoff return. First and ten from about the 18-yard line. Ebbinghouse up under center. Man goes in motion. He gets the handoff and trips and falls, and that is 45 Friel. And Friel will go backwards. Never even got the turn upfield as he tripped over his own feet and loses about four yards, so it'll be second and 14. That looked like Whitco's version of the wing tee. They ran a jet sweep out of it. And 
And like you said, Freeland just lost his footing. Second and 14 for the Wildcats as they still in the huddle with 10 on the play clock. They're going to have to hurry. Play clock down to seven. They break the huddle. And have Harmon to the near side with one on the clock. They fake it. Rolls to the right as Ebbinghaus throws it out in the flat. It's going to be caught by Cassidy. Cassidy around the right side, and he's going to be knocked out of bounds. But another first down for the Wildcats, and they are inside the red zone. Red zone brought to you by Rochester Glass for all your glass needs. Contact Rochester Glass, and the Wildcats knocking on the door here. Quickly out of the huddle this time as Ebbinghaus comes up, set under center. First and goal from about the three. Up the middle they go. Second effort, leans forward, and he will get to the one. And that appeared to be Smith. And that will be up a second and goal from about the one yard line. Second and goal from the one. Zebras. Need a big goal line stance here. Ebbinghaus looking to the sideline for the play. It'll come in from Hepler. Hepler will run it in. Hepler coming in at standing a senior at 5'7". He'll come split to this near side. Full house backfield this time. Ebbinghaus back to Smith again. Smith going to be stopped. Back to the line of scrimmage to the one. And that'll bring up third and goal. Good play by Zach Parks. He was the one who penetrated and shut that play down. Third down and goal for the Wildcats. In fact, it looks like they might have moved him back to about the two. So a loss of one there. So third and two now for the Wildcats. Or third and goal from the two. Here's Ebbinghaus up under center. Ebbinghaus will keep it himself this time. Goes up the middle. Touchdown. touchdown. Wildcats in the end zone at the 452 mark. On a two-yard run by the quarterback on a quarterback keeper. in crew Ebbinghaus. And now we're at 7-6. And the Wildcats will try to tie it up with the PAT. The old swinging gate, Val. They line up way off to the near side. All right, just in case you, they <laughs> go for two. And uh, Harmon will be the kicker. Now they run back and get set. Harmon the kicker. Here's the snap. The ball's up, and it's blocked. Blocked by Xavier Vance. And, yeah, you can't tell the PAT. Caught it right in is the glove. <laughs> and with the 452 mark, score, Zebra 7, Wildcat 6. Back with more this, Giant FM and RTC TV 4. Morning drive brought to you by Rochester Ford for the Wicca Wildcats, Val. 11 plays, 48 yards, took 6.09 off the clock. Crew Ebbinghaus with a two-yard touchdown run and a quarterback sneak. And the PAT was blocked, so Rochester still leads. Whitco 7-6 with 4.52 to go in the first quarter. Well, they even uh, had a few extra yards there because of some penalties, and uh, the Zebras just couldn't quite. The big play was uh, that pass across the middle at uh, fourth down. So now the Zebras will get the ball back after the kick here to, uh, from the Odell Lumber kickoff. And Harmon will kick it. End over end kick. Going to be taken by Maddox Jewell. Jewell on the far side will bring it to the Zebra sideline. He's got a blocker. He's got another blocker. Now he brings it up across the 35. Going to be down about the 36 yard line, it appears. Nice, so, nice block by Zach Parks to get Jewell a few more extra yards there. Zebra's second possession of the contest will come with 4.45 to go here in the first quarter. Looks like they're going to set the ball right at the 35-yard line. Oh, first and 10 for the Zebras. Powers comes to the near side again. Powers set. Meadows in the contest. Murphy goes in motion. 
They fake the pitch back to Murphy. Beck has it up the middle. Now comes to the near side. Going to be brought down about the 44-yard line. So a nice run by Brent Beck, and he'll pick up eight yards. It'll be second down and two. Brian, you have to respect the pitch. So even yeah. if you just even if you just pause for a second yeah. to respect that pitch, then it'll slow you down. And Brant Beck took advantage of that there. Brant up two, four carries for 29 yards so far. Pollock breaks the huddle with the squad. In Meadows, Murphy, and Beck. This time Meadows goes in motion. Beck gets it down on the left side, cuts it back up the middle. Beck bounces through. Beck going to be thrown down at the uh, Whitco 45 and another Steve Moore agency first down. Beck saw a hole there as he started out on the left side, cut it back across, had a great vision, kept his eyes looking forward, picked up an extra five yards for that. Now the zero's first and 10 from the Whitco 45. We've seen Brant at fullback tonight, but this, it seems like the coach is kind of mixing up the play calls a yeah. little bit. And Pollock up really under successful center. so far. Meadows goes in motion. Beck this time around the left side. Whitco's going to push him back, but they're going to give him about two yards. So it'll be second and eight as the ball now at the 43-yard line. On the near sideline, so Carson Pollock not near as far to have to come over the sideline to get the play call. He probably likes being on these near hashes. <laughs> Pollock and Coach Schaefer took a few extra seconds there talking about this play call. We'll see what the Zebras opt to do here. Second and eight. Pollock puts Meadows in motion. Pitches to Meadows this time around the left side. Meadows got some room. Meadows in the first down and more. Meadows going to be brought down near the 30. And a big pickup for Trenton Meadows. Yeah, the wide receiver, they didn't split anybody out wide. The wide receivers were almost lined up like extra, yeah. extra blockers almost. So a nice play that time by the Zebras. Yeah, and again, uh, kind of a quick pitch by Pollock, get Meadows out there quickly. Bowers back in, he'll come split to this near side. On the far hash this time, the Zebras have it. Pollock up under center. Pollock keeps it this time, pulls it out of the belly of Beck, turns it outside. Gonna be caught just by the shoestring as he tried to turn the corner, but it's gonna be down at about the 26 yard line. Nice tackle by Harmon. Give him five. Second and five. Definitely I mean, probably a first down saving tackle. I don't know if it was going to be a touchdown, but yeah. he would have been into the first down territory. Because, I mean, there were the rest of the Whitco line got blown off the ball yeah. by about five yards. That was a nice tackle by Harmon. He was out on an island. Bowers again split to this near side from the near hash this time. Pollock looking to throw. Look for Bowers. Throws it up. Drew's trying to beat his man, and it's going to be overthrown this time as double coverage on Bowers that time and uh, kind of some bumping going on. Incomplete. That'll bring up third and five. Well, that was interesting. We don't see Drew Bowers double covered. Have you seen that this year? <laughs> you no. Know, well, after he beat him so bad yeah. the last one, I think they decided if he goes split out, we yeah, better he's take two. Some, he's going to need some help. Yeah. yeah. So we'll see what uh, Coach Schaefer does with the third and a five here. Bowers will go to the far side this time. Got a little more room on the side. Pollock up under center. Now to back, fakes it. Now gets to Murphy. Kai Murphy around the right side. Murphy's going to be brought down near the 20. Looks like he's going to have the first down. We'll wait and see, and they do. Steve Moore Agency first down for Kai Murphy. A big run of five yards. And you, you watch Kai Murphy. He's got long strides. He does. He takes just a couple strides. He's five yards downfield <laughs> already. He's a nice looking back. He's. So the Zebras in the red zone now, brought to you by Rochester Glass. For all your glass needs, contact Rochester Glass. Bowers goes to the far side again, over at the numerals this time. Pollock up under center. Pollock to Beck. Beck around the right side, finds a hole, lowers his head inside the 15. Going to be brought down to about the 14-yard line. Pick up a six. It'll be second down and four now for the Zebras. Minute five to go here in the first quarter. It looked like Whitco aligned 
they thought that play was going to that side. I think they read the play right. They just, the Zebra offensive line was just better than Whitco's defensive line there. Under a minute. Here in the first quarter, 7-6, to six, Zebra's lead, and we're going to have a timeout, Whitco, as the coach timeout. doesn't like what Whitco. he sees from the sideline, so he'll call a timeout. We'll take one as well. You're listening to Zebra Football here on Giant FM Sports at RTC TV4. Mr. High School after the Whitco timeout. The Zebras will have it second and four from about the 16-yard line. Randy and Val, glad you could join us. Pioneer 7-0 over Winnemag at the end of the first quarter. Here's the Zebras. Pollock up under center. Pollock gets it out to Meadows. Meadows around the left side. Kind of looked like maybe a little confusion on the Zebras that time as it was a kind of a cluster that yeah. time, and Meadows had really had no room to go. Well, nice job by... Whitco, they kind of strung the play wide, I think, and then uh, the hole wasn't there, and then uh, the rest of the defense helped out. So good team defense there by Whitco. Another one could what, what third and two, and I think this is four down territory without question. Lewis Cass leads ten to seven over the Peru Tigers with a little over three minutes to go in the first quarter. Play clock down to one. They're going to have to hurry. They do. They get it with the Meadows. Meadows around the left side. He's got a first down, but here comes a penalty marker. That's coming back. As the play, the clock expires on the quarter, and we'll end the quarter on that flag. We'll see what it is. We'll come back after that. You're listening to Zebra Football here on Giant FM and RTC TV4. So the ball is pushed back to the 22-yard line. And the Zebras will have an untimed down here. The play clock rolls, but the other clock does not. Bowers to the near side. They fake it. They're looking to throw. Pollock out. He's got pressure coming. Here comes another penalty. It's complete to Bowers. But a flag on the far side. We'll wait and see. And... Another holding penalty. This time it's going to be back on the 28 yard line. Unfortunately, the last two plays, the Zebras go in the wrong direction. So we're going to hold still before we send it to commercial break again because I'm guessing that we can't end again on the quarter. So holding on the Zebras. And they'll march that back. Again, the official put the flag at the 28. So the Zebras are going to have it third and about a mile. <laughs> yeah, third and 22. And uh, there was a Whitco pass rusher who was going to come in unblocked. And I think the Rochester player held him, just took the penalty rather than somebody take a shot at Pollock. But yeah, third and 22 now. So another untimed play here. Bowers comes in the near side. Pollock up under center. Single coverage to Bowers this time. Here's a double handoff. Murphy brings it back. Murphy up the middle. He's got room. Murphy gets across the 20. And that'll put it at the, he'll be marked down at the 20-yard line. And they're actually going to put it at the 19. And that We'll do it for the quarter. Back with the second quarter after this. You're listening to Zebra Football. Giant FM and RTC TV. Down now they're going to be facing into the sun and facing a fourth down and about what, about 10 yards. Yeah, I have fourth and nine, yeah. Nine. Another nice tackle in the open field by Harmon. If Murphy breaks that tackle, he might have gotten the first down. Yeah, he is very close. So the Zebras will have it going into the sun this time. Going right to left on your radio dial. Watching on RTC TV 4. It's going into the sun, as you can see. She mentioned Bailey in a tight end. So now Pollock up under center. Pollock, the handoff is to Meadows. Meadows around the left side. He's got some room. Tucks it outside. Meadows still on his feet. Finally going to be knocked out of bounds. And the Zebras pick up the first down and more. And he's inside the... 10, looks like a down around the five yard line. So the Zebras will have another first and goal in the red zone brought to you by Rochester Class. Wow. 
you go to a run play on fourth and nine, and you get the first down. And a lot more. Yeah. <laughs> Trenton Meadows doing a great job there. And now the Zebras have it first and goal from the five. Gain of 14. Pollock up under center. Beck, Murphy, and Meadows still in the backfield. Pitch goes to Meadows. Meadows finds a hole. Meadows around the left side and touchdown, Trenton Meadows. 11.48 mark in the second. And the Zebras put seven more on the board. That was a nice Six block. More. Nice block by Brant Beck. Yeah, great block. You watch here on RTC TV4 replay. Pollock also in there leading the way. Five yard run, Val. Yeah, Hunter Long was there for the tackle, or he thought he thought it was, but that was just running hard. Davis Rainey comes in for the PAT. Zebra's running in the 11th player at the last minute. Somebody not realizing it's fit, uh, extra point crew. Pollock, the holder, calls for the snap. Here it is. It's down. The kick is up, and it is good. Zebras take a 14-6 lead with 11.48 to go here in the second quarter. You're listening to Zebra Football, Giant FM, and RTC TV4. Here at Barn Hardfield. Randy and Val, glad you could join us. Beautiful night for high school football. A little cooler than it uh, we've seen, but that's okay. It's going to be a great weekend. Some cool weather into the area for the weekend. Four carries for 36 yards just on that drive for Trenton Meadows. Wow. Coming up at halftime, we'll give you the first half game summary brought to you by the Mantel Moose Family Fund Center. We'll also uh, have the, uh, talk to Val about things that's happened this week in Zebra Athletics. and For an hour and a half or uh, just for the regular well, usual hopefully time? hopefully just the regular time okay. this time. But I know you've got some uh, big things to talk about in girls' golf, some yeah. record-breaking week. Yeah, in girls' golf. It might so. take me an hour and a half. Yeah, it might for that. So we'll, they've been going. We'll talk more about that coming up at halftime. As we get ready to go here for the Odell Lumber kickoff. Northfield leads McConaughey 6 to nothing into the first quarter. And again, last report it was 10-7. Cass over Peru. We'll get, keep you up to date on that. And here's the Odell Lumber kick. It's a short kick. Going to be hit at the 40. And Zebra's trying a little trickery. And Whitco does not fall for it. Is the front crew able to jump on it? So they'll give Whitco pretty decent field position. And they'll start at their own. Looks like they're going to mark it at about the 39, 40 yard line. Was that Grady Veach, number 65, who fell on that? They're going to mark it at 39, so that's where they'll start first and 10 on their second possession. First possession in the first quarter, uh, I mean, uh, crew Ebbinghaus let them down the field. We'll see what the Zebra defense can do this time to slow the Whitco Wildcats down offensively. Ebbinghaus up under center again. Sends a man in motion. This time the handoff goes to Smith. Smith. Coming from that left side, tried to go back up the middle, and he had to kind of bounce around a little bit like a uh, ping pong ball. As he picks up four yards, it'll be second and six. Clock continues to roll with 11.25 to go here before halftime. 14 to six, Zebras lead it on the Fort County Solid Waste District scoreboard. Well, again, that's a good sign if they can get four yards on first down uh, against this big zebra defensive line. Ebbinghaus sends a man in motion. Ebbinghaus hands it off this time in the backfield. He might get a yard, and that appeared to be. Is that Smith again? I believe so. 35, Landon Smith, a 5'10 junior, 195 pounds. They tried kind of like a draw play yeah. there. Just shy of the 45 to the 44, so really no gain on that one. Still third down, about six. Give him five, I guess. Give him a yard pickup. We'll be generous. Ebbinghaus up under center. Ebbinghaus fakes it, rolls out to the near side, looking to throw. Ebbinghaus loses it, ball's loose. 
And it's still squirting around, and I believe a Wildcat able to fall on it. And he did, 72. 72 is Grady Branning able to fall on it as Ebbinghaus goes to throw that, and that just slipped out of his hands. Big loss for the Wildcats, and that brings up fourth and long. Yeah, exactly. It just slipped out of his hand. Good pressure, though. Fervida and Clark were both in the neighborhood, especially Fervida was right in his kitchen, but boy. And going back to punt will be Harmon. You're happy to punt there. Harmon will punt it away into the hands of Zach Parks. Parks has it at the 26. Parks at the 40, still on his feet. They're going to be finally brought down at about the 44-yard line. And that's where the Zebras will take over first and 10 here with 9.28 to go in the first half on the Fulton County Solid Waste District scoreboard. 40-yard punt. But that is going to be a 27, 25-yard return. Nope. Nope. Well, we do have a penalty marker as well. So that could change things. And it is against Wicko, declined by the Zebras. They'll take the punt and have the ball now at the 44-yard line. Nice block by Clarence Garrett to give Zach some help there. So 19 on the return, so only a 21-yard net. So the Zebras will take over first and 10 from the own 44-yard line. Coming in is Ethan Bailey. He'll come back in, and Bowers will come out. So with 9.28 to go, the Zebras have another opportunity to see if they can march it down the field here before halftime. Back in the backfield along with Kai Murphy and Meadows. Nope, that's Parks in there. They fake it. Pollock to throw. He's going deep. He's got Parks open in the end, the end and they can't get it to him. Knocked loose. Great defense that time by the Wildcats. And defending was Harmon. Parks was going down the middle, and he got down near the 20, and Harmon able just to knock it loose. Pollock unleashed that one. As big as he's been on offense, he's been bigger on defense, mm -hmm. Harmon, because Parks had a step, but Harmon hustling back and was able to make that play. That was kind of a double, a double play action, yeah. kind of fake two different handoffs. So second and 10. Parks gets the pitch this time, and now penalty marker, and that one's going to be on the Zebras. False start. And that'll be five-yard penalty. Bring up second 15. So it'll be just about the 39-yard line. Zebras uh, had it maybe a few too many penalties last week, Then this is what, penalty... Three? I believe so. Yeah. yeah. Two of them back to back. Uh, they're in the first, ending the first quarter. So second and 15 now for the Zebras. Parks goes in motion. They fake it to him this time. Back up the middle. Beck kind of lost his balance there for a minute. Able to recover it and uh, falls forward near the 50 yard line. Gets to the 48. So he picks a big chunk of that back up. and. Zebras will have it now in about second and six. It'll be third and six. Or third, yeah, they had to change the marker on the other side. Third and six for the Zebras. Beck, Parks, and Murphy. Parks goes in motion, he gets the pitch coming to the near side. Tries to go down the sideline, I think he's gonna be short of the first down. Zebras are gonna have a fourth and short just across the 50. What will Coach Schaefer do here? That was actually the play they were going to run, I think, before the, the penalty, illegal procedure penalty. So fourth and short now for the Rochester Zebras. Yeah, it's, I have it fourth and one. It's probably, and with the way the sticks are, it's probably not even one. Yeah. So we'll see what the Zebras opt to do. They're going to go for it. Pollock up under center. Back behind him. Murphy to the left, Parks to the right. Pollock fakes it to Beck, gives it to Parks. Parks brings it around the left side, and he gets a first down and more. 
Just lowers his head, runs right into the defender in uh, number 11, Kale Hepler. And they pick up another Steve Moore Agency Zebra first down. Nice job. You knew the Whitco defense would flock to Brand Beck, so you fake the hand yeah. up to him, and the second man through uh, as Parks around the left side. And he made absolutely sure he got the first down and got uh, five yards beyond that. So two carries for 11 yards for Parks on this drive. Meadows in uh, this time, or excuse me, uh, not Meadows, uh, Maddox Jewel in on the far side this time. Maddox rolls out another penalty marker on the Zebras. As they roll, looked like they were going to try to throw it that time as Pollock was rolling to his right. Procedure again, and that'll bring up second and, or first and 15. Penalties hurting right now the Zebras. They do have a 14 to six lead, but a lot of these are just little mental mistakes and Coach Schaefer kind of just shaking his head on the sideline. Right, just a fine line between getting off the ball quickly and illegal procedure. Yeah, kind of what we saw last week. So first and 15 out for the Zebras. Under eight to go before halftime. The pitch to Parks, it's kind of dramatics, kind of short, he picks it up, still going, a broken play. And Maddox Jewel makes uh, something out of nothing. And he's gonna get a Steve Moore agency first down. Man, that was not how you practice it. That, no. Unless you're practicing rugby. <laughs> kind of drops it, pitches a little short, but it allowed uh, some enough time to hit a gap. And then uh, he was off to the races down the left side, and Zebras have it first and 10 now. Gain of 19 there. Ball sitting at about, what is that, the 30? How about the 27? Yep, 27. First and 10. Pollock up under center. Wally in. Pollock gives it off to uh, Wally. Wally around the left side. And Wally picks up a nice few yards. Trevor Wally. First time in. Gets the ball. Pinder and Heisey. Looked like they were able to really push that defense back. And Ball's at the 20. Seven yard pickup. Second and three. We'll take a seven-yard pickup on first down all day. Again, Beck, Wally, and Murphy in the backfield. Pollock up under center. Double tight. Handoff is to Beck, or Murphy. Or did it go to Beck? Murphy faked it so well. It did go to Beck, I believe. Beck with a nice run around the right side. Gets a first down and more. And he's inside the red zone. And it looks like it could be right at the 10 yard line. Like the 11. 11, so it'll be a first and 10. They'll be able to get a first down without the touchdown. And somebody got double teamed there yeah. and they got sent way back and Brant Beck just followed that, those two guys and an easy nine. Up under center, fakes to Beck, gives it to Wally. Wally around the left side. He's Going to be wrapped up and brought down, but a nice, another nice run by Wally. Looks like he'll pick up about six on it. Harmon, another tackle, but again, pretty and well blocked. The Wildcats want another timeout. They want to talk about this stance. It's second and a four with 6.27 to go here before halftime. Thanks to Steve and the entire crew at RTC doing another great job on the cameras for us here at Barnhard Field. Zebras now in the shade as the, the shadow of the uh, high school and the sun starting to come down. So the Zebras aren't looking directly into it as they have it second and four now. Whitco with one timeout left. Zebras have all three. Manchester has all three. So out of the timeout, what will Coach Schaefer decide to do here? A lot of options here. Pollock. Uh, the ball looks like it came loose. It's picked up by Pollock, and Pollock is in the end zone. But a penalty after the touchdown. We'll wait and see. This touchdown should stand. And a penalty marker, though, was thrown after the official said touchdown. We'll let him convene and make sure first. But I'll, a little confusion maybe there as we look back at this on RTC TV4. The ball dropped. Pollock was able to pick it up. That was not the intended play. 
and was still able to scramble. And then the penalty flag come in the end zone yeah. there at the last. Yeah, Kellen, right where Kellen Furbida got knocked down. So. The officials still yeah. talking about it. I wouldn't want to guess. And chop block below the knees against Whitco. So the touchdown will probably stand, and they'll take the penalty on the kickoff, I'm going to guess. Wait and see. As, yep, Zebras are going to take the touchdown. And Greeny will come in for the extra point. They'll enforce that penalty on the kickoff. And so he, what was the six-yard run? Yep. Six-yard run for Carson Pollock with 6.21 to go. I'm telling you, rugby. Sure looked like it. Yeah. And a couple times here in <laughs> this possession. So <laughs> Reedy will get ready to I'll just leave it. the ball right here and you pick it up and run it. Up. Coach getting the official decision from the official on the far sideline. So that's the delay here. Now we're ready to go. Davis Reedy for the point after. 20 to 6 right now as it stands. And Reedy trying to make it 21. Penalty marker comes. Offsides. So if you're Coach Schaefer, do you think about going for two here? And looks like they are. Going to go for two. So uh, Reney will pick up the tee and come back out. Beck and the crew will come back in. And the Zebras will go for two after the penalty. What was weird is I think because of the fumble on the snap, Whitco kind of over pursued the play and Pollock just went yeah. backside. And... So the two point conversion, we'll see what the Zebras can do. They could not get a two point conversion last week against Tippecanoe Valley. We'll see if the Zebras can punch it in here. It's Murphy, Meadows, and Beck. In the backfield, Meadows goes in motion. He gets the ball. Meadows around the left side, and he is in for the two-point conversion. So that'll take it to 22 to six with the two-point conversion being good by Meadows. And with 6.21 to go here in the first half, Zebras lead it, 22-6. Giant FM, RTC, TV4. On the board this time as that scoring drive brought to you by Rochester Ford. Val, tell us about it. Nine plays, 56 yards. It took 3.08 off the clock. Carson Pollock with a six-yard touchdown run, and Trenton Meadows with a two-point conversion run, and Rochester now leads Whitco 22-6 to six with 6.21 to go in the first half. So the penalty uh, on the touchdown run will be assessed here on the kickoff, so Mr. Reaney will get to kick from the 45-yard line of Whitco. Yeah, I didn't see exactly what happened there on the penalty, but Callan Furbita was the guy who got yeah. knocked down, and... Greeny, just a two-step drop this time. He kicks it up, and it's going to be taken by someone that normally wouldn't return the ball, so he catches it and just drops, and that appeared to be 77, Braxton Jackson. He'll just take a knee at the, looks like about the 20-yard line. Yeah, I imagine whatever Davis Reeney was told yeah. as far as the kickoff was, don't kick the ball to Harmon, whatever you do. Don't go to Harmon and don't kick it out of bounds. Right. 17-13, <laughs> Cass over Peru midway through the second quarter. So here comes the Wildcats with another opportunity here in the first half with 6.21 to go. Ebbinghaus up under center. He splits out to the near side, now Harmon. Ebbinghaus, man in motion. Pitches it back, cuts it back up. That appears to be Cassidy. Cassidy gets to the 20, so looks like no gain. It was Harmon. Was that Harmon? Okay. And that was a heck of a play on defense by Brand Beck. Back to the 20, so second and 10. It looked like he, I don't know if he, Brent made the tackle or if he just forced it into a bunch of defenders, but he penetrated it. And Harmon was not able to run in a straight line, and that will go for no gain. Yes. So with eight on the play clock, the Whitco Wildcats finally break the huddle. They're going to have to hurry down to three. 
Ebbinghaus, and now the Wildcats will take note. What do we got? We got an official timeout. Luke play with him like an equipment issue or something? Saved by the equipment issue as uh, maybe, I don't know, the official kind of told him he needed to come out. Equipment will look at it, looks like. So now coming back in will be Harmon then. So we'll reset the play clock and Whitco will back, go back into the huddle. With Harmon in, they change the plays. Northwestern East Southwood, 14 to seven, eight minutes to go in the half. Now with 10 seconds to go, they break the huddle. North Miami leads Caston 15 to seven with four minutes to go in the half. They look Pioneer. to throw out to Harmon. Harmon on the far side. Harmon will get the first down. Give him 11 on the catch. And that's a first down for the Whitco Wildcats. So first and 10 now for the Wildcats. The ball sitting at the 31 yard line. Three receptions for 44 yards for Harmon. Wildcats break the huddle with 10. Pioneer 20 to nothing over Winnemac with about a minute to go in the half. Clock continues to roll, 4.45 to go. And another yellow laundry. Penalty flag this time against the Wildcats. That'll negate the 11 yard pickup. It'll take it back five yards, first and 15. So we'll reset the play and Harmon will come back in with the play from the sideline, it looks like. Randy and Val, glad you could join us. Stay with us here coming up at halftime. We'll take a look at the first half stats and the highlights. And we'll also talk about Zebra sports in general as we go through all the teams in action this last week. Back, dropping back to throw. Ebbinghaus over the middle. It's complete by Harmon. Harmon still on his feet. Finally going to be brought down near the first down marker. And they give it to him, give him a 15-yard pickup. First and 10 for the Wildcats. It's a couple different times that Harmon has just broke across the middle there, and Ebbinghaus finds him. So now the ball is sitting at the 41-yard line of the Wildcats. Ebbinghaus up under center. Ebbinghaus. Out of the eye this time. The handoff up the middle. That was Smith. Landon Smith, the junior. Goes nowhere. So it'll be second. I might have given him a foot. <laughs> but still second and 10. 3.35 to go here in the first half. 22 to 6. Zebra's lead on the Fulton County Solid Waste District scoreboard. Smith has been relatively shut down in this game. Six carries for five yards. Harmon split to this near side this time. Oh, they throw it to the top side over the top of Cassidy, the intended receiver. Cassidy is uh, listed at 5'12", and I think that's pretty generous as uh, that throw was probably for a guy about 6'7". <laughs> he's listed at 5', yeah. He's listed at 5'11". He looks like he's maybe 5'7", five, 5'8". Five, yeah. Do they measure these guys about them standing on a box or something? Yeah. Now I want you to look at this, Val. So mm -hmm. I'm not. So I'm not. You know, five twelve. Oh, in that geez. six foot. <laughs> That's what my roster says. Five twelve. My math is interesting, I guess. Here's the throw. Ebbing House across the middle. It's broken up and incomplete. Penalty marker at the last minute. After everything is incomplete and thrown, they. Far referee throws a yellow flag. Personal foul against the Zebras. Personal foul against the Zebras. A very late flag. Going to bail the Whitco Wildcats out on that one. 
I didn't see, we'll have to see if Steve can get us a RTC replay on that one. I didn't see it at the end of the play. No pressure, Steve. As they mark off the penalty, an automatic first down, the ball will be spotted inside the 45, down to about the 44. Might have been a late hit, or it might have been leading with the head. Getting called targeting. Yeah. But we'll wait and see. Yeah, I mean, the flag came in after the referee, so I, I, you're trying to kind of lead, I guess, towards a late hit. All right, here is Whitco now with first and 10 for the 44. Ball's loose, ball's on the ground, and Zebras have it, they say, and so does the official. Turnover, Whitco. I think that was Furbida who got him. Kind of a bad snap it appeared to be as we look at no, the I think that, oh, bad handoff. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was a bad handoff. Looked like he was going to keep it, and it ended up bouncing off of maybe the, the hip of yeah. the running back. But Fervida again in the right place at the right time. He had a fumble recovery last week against Valley. He's got another one this week, and that was... Whitco was on the move there. So turnover on downs, and the Zebras will have it now. First and 10 from their own 47 yard line. Where they start with 3.05 to go before halftime. Again, uh, Whitco will get the ball to start the second half, so this could be a big score here for the Zebras if they can get it in the end zone before halftime. Yeah, the Zebras found out about the importance of a late score in the first half. Murphy goes in motion. Pollock rolls to his right to throw. He's got a man open, and it is complete to Bowers. Bowers is gonna pick up about 15, 16 yards, and it's another Steve Moore agency first down. Powers are very good, like, fundamentals yeah. as a receiver, which is just shocking for a guy who hasn't played yeah. football in so long. Uh, he was over on that sideline, and he made sure he stayed in bounds just long enough to make the catch, and then stepped out. So another Steve Moore agency first down. He was in Whitco territory now at the 38-yard line. 15 yards on that reception for Bowers. Clock stops at three minute mark. Five on the play clock. Zebras are going to have to hurry. And I think Coach Schaefer got the timeout just in the nick of time, and he does. Takes his first timeout with 2.59 to go here in the first half on the Fulton County Solid Waste District scoreboard. Zebras lead at 22 6. Giant FM and RTC TV4. Go at this point. Now you really don't want to make a mistake. <laughs> Rochester has had the ball four times and they've scored four touchdowns. Here's Rainey with the Odell Lumber kickoff from the Zebra 40 this time. Rainey. Deep in over end kick this time. Going to be taken by Harmon. Harmon misjudges it and it will go in his favor as it goes forward, but he's able to fall on it. And the Wildcats will take over first and 10 from the 26-yard line. Let's see, was that Harmon or was that somebody else? I, whoever had hit him right in the face mask. Yeah. So with 1.29 to go here before halftime, Zebras own a 28-6 lead, and Boyko Wildcats fumbled the ball the last time they had it, so we'll see if the Zebra defense can cause a havoc here in the last 90 seconds. And the Zebras still have two timeouts left, so let's see if Coach Schaefer uses his timeouts there if Whitco decides to keep it on the ground. Having house up under center. Or let's see if Whitco goes into the, I mean, Whitco should go another two-minute offense. Ebbing House no rolls, comes should. to the near side, pursuit by the Zebras. Ebbing House will tuck it this time. Ebbing House will come to the near side, and he'll step out of bounds after he picks up the first down. He was being chased by Grant Clark. Zebras have not contained, the defensive ends have not contained all that great in this game. And that was a gain of 14 for Ebbinghaus. Stops the clock as he goes out of bounds with a minute 21. So the nice run that time by Ebbinghaus as he rolled the throw it, but Zebra secondary did a good job covering everybody up, but unfortunately, Gave up a big run. So Ebbinghaus, again, under center, looking to throw. 
looking, looking, chased out of the pocket. He unleashes it. It's a wobbler, and it'll be incomplete as pressure put on the backfield, and that's Vance and Clark. And that'll bring up fourth and ten. Second and ten. Yeah, second. Well, look, see, Val, I look across, and they have fourth. That's where I got it. Okay. I should always look at Steve's, I guess. Yeah. He has second. I have a hard time counting one to four. Yeah, that... And so do they. <laughs> so how about second and ten? That was a risky throw by Ebbinghaus. That was a wounded duck that yeah. just floated in the air, and you do not want to commit another. I, again, you, you want to. I, if you pick that one off, it's going the other way. Right. I mean, that's, right. that was that wide open. Whitco takes their final timeout with a minute 15 to go here before half. First time. year. Uh, curious to see how much they've improved. Zebras will be on the road the next two weeks following tonight as Manchester next week and down to Walton, Indiana, Lewis Cass in two weeks. So after the timeout, it'll be a second and 10 now for the Wildcats. Heming House to throw, flushed out of the pocket. Here comes a flag in the backfield. Throw is incomplete off of the shoulder of Hepler. It's going to be on Whitco. And it is a holding against Whitco. It was either going to be a hold or probably a sack <laughs> if they didn't hold him. So they chose to uh, get the hold, and that will march it back. Coach might want to decline this. And they do decline it. So it'll be third down and ten. So with a minute nine, the Zebras... Good force. A three and out here. And get it back with a few seconds to try to do something with. And you've seen Carson Pollock air it out a couple times tonight. We'll see what happens if the Zebras can get a stop and get it back. We'll see what Waco opts to do here because if they throw it and it goes incomplete, it stops the clock, giving Rochester maybe a little bit more time. So, out of the decline penalty, it's third and ten. Ebbing House up under center. Looks to throw, gets it out, and that is complete this time to Harmon. And Harmon falls across the 45 to the 46. Harmon Not enough for the seven. first down. Clock continues to roll under a minute. Rochester will no, take so a timeout. Yeah, yeah. So you said the clock continues to roll, and I was like. Well, as I said it. Coach yeah. Schaefer decides to call a timeout. He'll use his second timeout. And when we come back to action, it'll be fourth down and about four to go here from Rochester High School. At the end of the game, we'll have to uh, pick a uh, player of the game brought to you by Inyards Hardware for nearly 50 years. Inyards has been there to help you with all your hardware needs. So Val is always got that in the back of his mind. I've got a couple candidates early here in the first half. Yeah. So it's fourth and about four for the Wildcats. Ebbing House drops back to throw, looks left, looks right, now flushed out of the pocket, throws it up in the air, and it's intercepted by Bowers. Bowers with the interception across the 50 to the 45. Going to be hit there and finally down. And the Zebras will take over first and 10 from the 45 with 47.7 seconds to go before halftime. They got some pressure on uh, Ebbinghaus, and he forced him to throw a little bit early and across the field, and that kind of ruined the timing, and Drew Bowers, again, doing a nice job, and that was his second uh, interception in as many weeks. Harmon was the intended receiver just out of the outstretched arms. And a 25-yard interception return. So Bowers is in there on offense now. They'll have 47.7 seconds to go to the other end of the field with one timeout remaining. And they'll start at the 45 or 44 yard line. The one timeout remaining is the key. Yeah. Because uh, you don't have to necessarily pass. They hand it off to Beck. Beck fumbles in, uh, fumbles it in the backfield, kind of picks it up, it stumbles. Yeah, Not what you want to do on first down. Yeah, and now Coach lost, Schaefer's got to take that timeout early. And he got what he wanted and some miscommunication in the uh, on the on the line is right. Yeah, I, I think I think something along those yeah. lines. Yeah. So we'll uh, see. Guessing the zebras are going to try to right. air it out. Let's see what they come out. What set they look like here, as they bring Jewel Maddox Jewel to the near side. 
Here is Pollock up under center. Pollock drops back, looks to throw, airing it out to Maddox Jewel. He's got his man beat, and it's complete down to the 10. Axel going to be inside the 10. What a throw and a catch. Look at it again here on RTC TV oh, this 4. This is a beautiful pass by Carson Pollock. I mean, this was. Sets up. Meadows just kept running. Outruns his defender. The what safety a great was, catch. Yeah, the safety was late, and that's a 40 yard gain. 100 long, and the safety back there. And the Zebras have it 27 seconds. Clock rolls. They pitch back to Murphy. Murphy has a hole up the middle. Murphy into the end zone. Touchdown. <laughs> 20 seconds to go, and Kai Murphy's into the end zone for the first time tonight. Murphy gets credit for a seven yard run. Yeah, I had it for six yards, but that was a nice. He followed actually Carson Pollock's block. So a great and two minutes drill there. Reese's seeing Murphy run the sweep. He kind of cut it inside there when he saw where that's where the hole was. PAT by Rini. Coming up, snaps better this time. The kick is up. It's a low line drive, but it's good. And the Zebras extend the lead now, 34 to 6. With 20 seconds exactly remaining, we'll be back with the final 20 seconds of the quarter right after this on Giant FM and RTC TV. We're at as the Zebras put another score on the board. Brought to you by Rochester Ford. Val, how'd they do it? Three plays, 44 yards, took 27.7 seconds off the clock. Kai Murphy with a six-yard touchdown run. Davis Reaney with the PAT, and Rochester leads with go 35-6 with 20 seconds to go. That's an onside kick. Onside and, kick. And, and, and I think it it's close. And they got to, uh, from the it's, 40. It's either it's Rochester the, ball or a penalty. It's at the 49 of Whitco. Oh, they got it. Ball. It is. Good this was perfect. It, it was like 10 yards and an inch when he touched yeah. it. I mean, that was nice for the Zebras. Great decision, great placement by Davis Reaney. And now the Zebras will have 19.2 seconds to go and try to get it down to the other end. The ball is sitting at their own 49-yard line. Reaney did a great job. I thought he was going to kick it deep, and then he just kind of put a little bit of leg into it, and it went 11 yards. So now 19.2 to go. No timeouts for either team. Pollock looking to air it out, I'm going to guess. Goes in motion to Murphy. Up the middle, it goes to Beck. Beck around the right side. Going to have to hurry down to 13, and that'll do it. That's going to do it for the first half. At halftime, the Zebras lead it 34 to 6 as we head to halftime. As we come back out at halftime, the second, third quarter, we'll start with Whitco and the football. We'll take a timeout, come back with some first half stats. All that coming more here as the Zebras lead it on the Fulton County Solid Waste District at halftime. 34 to 6, Dine FM and RTC TV 4. Early with that, 
but still only allowing six points on the board. Right. So uh, still in pretty good shape. Uh, Harmon's such a talented athlete in Whitco's, they're just trying to find ways to get him the ball in space. But really, when, when Whitco hit their drive, they were able to get Eddinghouse outside the pocket. He just did a better job of containing uh, in the second quarter than part of the two, because Whitco just sloppy. Some that interception by Bowers led to a touchdown there. Big interception by Bowers is an over through Harmon. Uh, when you overthrow your guy that you're used to throwing to, uh, and I think that things aren't going to happen on that one. Zebras on offense, really, uh, like we said, uh, we mentioned a couple different guys in the end zone. Pollock and Bowers, and you had Meadows in the end zone, you had Pollock uh, with a keeper. Back and Murphy, so uh, everybody seems to right. be touching the ball and, and having good success. Rochester scored five touchdowns. Five different players have scored one touchdown. They've had the ball six times. Uh, and scored five touchdowns. The only time they didn't score was right at the end of the half there at the right hand side kick. So. Let's talk uh, about and Carson Pollock going in the air tonight. Yeah, he's got 110 yards passing so wow. far. Uh, that's, that's a season high already. Rochester's thrown that much in the, yeah, in, in the, in the last couple of years. Yeah, we'd have to look it up. But yeah. yeah um, and it's been, yeah, I mean, they've tried different things. Especially for a half. Yeah, they've, they've tried different things in terms of uh, they've thrown short, they've thrown long, they've thrown the go route, they've thrown a different receiver, they've thrown the Bowers, they've thrown the uh, to, 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 to Murphy. Again, I think it's that short. If you can get some of those intermediate routes, those right. short routes, those cross routes. Uh, boy, then the defense is really, because, again, they see Pauly drop back, and you're, if you're a DB, your first step, especially if you're playing zone, is you're going to take a step back because you don't want Drew Bowers running behind you. And then if they throw it right in front of your face, boy, that's... It is our hard 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 to stop here. And then to you the uh, uh, to Harman. Harman cuts it in front of the defense. And, and a quick it begins so, with the uh, seventh uh, grader. Yeah, it, it's, it's a dangerous thing. Half time again. Yeah. Beginning with yeah. six. And again, Keegan Haley. Ron Schaefer is a, a real team coach, a real team coach. But again, if you remember some of those Lewis Cass teams that the offense was playing here before, those teams could do a little bit of everything. Aiden Cortez. Here at Rochester High School. Blue Edgar. Nice, cool night. Jordan Gonzalez. Greg Harris. Jackson Howard. Seth Jewell. Trey Keller, Asher Merrill, AJ Shorte, Tommy Schlang, Abraham Seward, Riker Smith, Madison Woodcox. Now beginning with the eighth graders. Beginning with number 58, Corbin Moultrie, Grant Bollinger. Kane Cortez, Gabe Coles, Gavin Fincher, Raskin Hester, Tanner Ford, Van Kaiser, Eli Murphy, Mason Oliver, Connor Obermeyer, Brody Owens, Jacob Pierce, Aiden Smith, Chevy Schwank, Emmett Vandergrift, Augie Wells, and the managers, Serenity Howard, Chloe Tyler, 
Layla Tyler. Mayla Gentry. The coaches, Josh Overmeyer, Amy Beck, Eric Murphy, Jake Good, and Jason Kaiser. The Rochester Middle School football team. Thank you, kids, and have a great season. On the zebra sideline. Pollock up under center. Quick snap. Rolls out. Looks to throw. Throws it up into the air for Bowers. Bowers got room underneath. Makes the catch. Into the end zone. Touchdown. Heisey on one side and Clark at the other. But we'll see shots at some point, we believe. Roll back. That's a different quarterback. We'll have to check that. That's Harmon. As they came out with a different to the near side. They fake it. They're looking to throw. Pollock out. He's got pressure coming. Here comes another penalty. It's complete to Bowers. But a flag on the far side. We'll wait. And see. Beck, Murphy, and Meadows still in the backfield. Pitch goes to Meadows. Meadows finds a hole. Meadows around the left side. And touchdown, Trent Meadows. Out to the near side. Looking to throw. Ebbinghaus loses it. Ball's loose. And still squirting around, and I believe a Wildcat able to fall on it. Fakes it to Beck, gives it to Parks. Parks brings it around the left side, and he gets a first down and more. Just lowers his head, runs right into the defender. Time. The pitch to Parks. It's kind of oh, to Maddox, kind of short. He picks it up, still going, a broken play. And Maddox Jewel makes uh, something out of it. Pollock, uh, the ball looks like it came loose. It's picked up by Pollock, and Pollock is in the end zone. But a penalty after the touchdown. Murphy, Meadows, and Beck in the backfield. Meadows goes in motion. He gets the ball. Meadows around the left side, and he is in for the kind of leading, I guess, towards a late hit. All right, here is Whitco now with first and 10 for the 44. Ball's loose, ball's on the ground, and... ...of a late score in the first half. Murphy goes in motion. Pollock rolls to his right to throw. He's got a man open, and it is complete to Bowers. Bowers going to pick up about... Pollock up under center. Pollock drops back to throw over the top, out to Murphy. Murphy with a reception. Murphy breaks the tackle. Murphy down the sideline, still on his feet. Finally going to be knocked out of bounds. Pollock up under center. Hands it off to Meadows. Meadows through the middle. Meadows got a big gap, still on his feet. Can't be brought down and finally going to be brought down. For Meadows so far. Zebra's knocking on the door here again. Pollock up under center. Pollock. Hands it off to Beck, walks it in the end zone. Out of the pocket, throws it up in the air, and it's intercepted by Bowers. Bowers with the interception across the 50 to the 45. Going to be hit there and finally down, and the Zebras will take Here is Pollock, up under center. Pollock drops back, looks to throw, airing it out to Maddox Jewel. He's got his man beat, and it's complete down to the 10. Long with the safety back there. The Zebras have it 27 seconds. Clock rolls. They pitch back to Murphy. Murphy has a hole up the middle. Murphy into the end zone. Touchdown. And Murphy with a six yard touchdown run. Davis Reaney with PAT and Rochester leads with go 35 6 with 20 seconds to go. That's an onside kick. Onside and, kick. And, and, and I think it it's close. They're ready for the kickoff here to start the third quarter. As Rini will go deep, he'll kick it to the near side. Yeah, and that's going to be picked up here by Cassidy. And the Zebras downfield coverage excellent. As it looks like he's going to be inside the 20 is where Whitco will start. Up just outside the 20. It's about the 21. So great downfield coverage. That was, that was Kale Shots. They set up the wall and Kale Shots beat the wall. <laughs>
he ran right past the wall, and he forced that back to the middle, which was not where it was supposed to go, and that was a great job by Kale. So the Zebras on defense. We'll see what they can do here with 11.54 to go, leading 34-6 to as we get started. Ebbinghaus up under center. Ebbinghaus taking his time, making sure everybody's set. Sends a man in motion as Cassidy. They go back up the middle. And rolling over the top of a couple of Zebra defenders appears to be the 35 Smith. Landon Smith will pick up about four yards. Second down and six now. Clock continues to roll here as we get started. Zebra's looking to get a big stop here and get some uh, good field position on the uh, on their first possession of the second half. See if the Zebra defense can hold. From the 26, play clock down to three. They're going to have to hurry. Just get it off. Back to pass, and they throw it out here to the near side. It'll be caught. And the intended receiver and catch is completed by, that's Cassidy. Dylan Cassidy, a 5'11 senior. And it's not enough for a first down, so it's still going to be third down and about two. Ball sitting at the 41-yard line of the Wildcats. Whitco had gotten, the Zebras had shut out Whitco each of the last two years, so for Whitco to score in their first drive tonight was definitely a sign of progress, but that second quarter was a rough time for them. And the handoff goes up the middle, and it's going to be close, and it looks like they're going to give him three yards, and so that'll be a first down and a pickup for uh, 45 Trevor Friel with the first down pickup of three. So they keep the drive alive. Ball now at the 44-yard line, or 34-yard line. Yeah, well, they were, the last time they were here was two years ago, and they lost 70 to nothing, and the program was in rough shape. Uh, and the coach got fired immediately the Monday after that game. The pro, this program's taken a turn for the better, but it's still, still a, lot of, a lot of work left. Right up the middle, and he's going to be hit hard as he bounces back. And they go back to around the left side as a collision at the line. Smith with the carry goes nowhere. In fact, they're going to actually uh, give him a yard, I guess. So second and nine. What? What a hit at the line of scrimmage. Here's Ebbinghaus. Zebras shifting their defense around. Ebbinghaus. The handoff again up the middle. That looked like Friel. That Friel or Smith. That was Smith again. Smith will pick up a couple more. Third down and about six. Ethan Bailey in on the tackle there. Ethan Bailey, a 6'1 sophomore, doing a pretty good job on both sides of the ball here tonight. Zebra defense shifting around as it's third and long now for the Woodco Wildcats. A handoff right back up the middle. And that's going nowhere. Evan House hands it off to Smith, and he might have got his bell rung on that one. Yeah, he took a yeah he took a big hit. Ball's going to be just shy of the forty. Fourth down and about five. Brad Sprunger, the coach, his brother used to be the head coach at Whitco. His father used to be the head coach at Whitco. Okay. Brian Sprunger, a legendary name. I know uh, Rochester had the ultimate yeah. respect for him. Mark Miller had great respect. Uh, Whitco has won. Whitco, it's still an amazing fact to me. Whitco has won the state championship in 1986. Smith going off on the sideline. He... Yeah, I think the refs took a look at yeah. him and said, you need to go off, sir. You, you need to get checked out. So they do bring him in. So fourth. And a five here, and it looks like they're going to step back to punt. Will Harmon yeah. parks back deep to receive it. He'll stand at between the 20 and 25. Whitco won state in 1986. That's the only time they've ever even so much as won a sectional. 
Here's the punt. Angled punt towards the Whitco sideline, and it takes a zebra bounce and directly out of bounds. Zebras will have it first and 10 from their own 36-yard line on the three and out. 25-yard punt, no return. So Carson Pollock will bring the squad out of this off the sideline, out of the huddle, and we'll see what the zebras do here in this first possession of the third quarter, leading at 34. 35 to 6. See, that's where I got 34. Oh. About. Look, see, right there. Okay. Right there. Okay. 35 to 6. <laughs> 7.57 to go here in the third. All right, here we go. First and 10 for the Zebras. Pollock up under center. Pollock takes his time, looks things over. Now pitches it back. It's over the top of the uh, Trevor Wally. Wally able to get back and fall on it. Luckily, because there was a defender there for the Whitco Wildcats, and that would have been a scoop and score. You'll see the pitch back here from uh, the RTC replay. And just right through the hands of Trevor Wally. And now the Zebras are behind the chains at second and 16. So they'll come out of the huddle. Down to five on the play clock. Down to three. Going to have to hurry it, too. They get it off. This time, Wally gets it into the belly. Bell across the middle. Still on his feet. Wally picks up what he lost and more as that one now going to bring up third and short for the Zebras. Well, I, I like that from the standpoint of, you know, Trevor wanted to atone for that last play. And he, was, he knew he was going to run determined, so... 2017, Peru now takes the lead with 7.50 left in the ball game. That is at Lewis Cass. There's a fake on the second man through this time as that will pick up a few yards of Trevor Wally again as they fake that time to, I believe, was that Shotzi or was that Murph? On the carry? Fake. On the fake. I think the fake was to Shots. Yeah. Fake to Shots, yeah. And they hand it off to Wally. So that'll be a fourth and about two long three. Zebras are going to go for it here at the 44-yard line. Pollock up under center. Pollock hands it off to Murphy. Murphy's met in the backfield. And a great stop by Korkendurfer. And the Zebras will turn it over on downs. Unfortunately, when he got the handoff and he turned to go up, Korkendurfer had already penetrated the backfield. Yeah that, was a, yeah, that was just a great effort by Kirk Dorfer. He really, uh, he penetrated in, and he blew that play up almost yeah. single-handedly. So now Whitco with probably their best field position of the evening at the Zebra 42-yard or 42 yard line. We'll have it first and 10. The Zebra defense with a big uh, task here. Tippecanoe Valley leads Hammond Morton 14-10 to 10 at halftime. Pioneer 35 to nothing over Whitco early in the fourth quarter, so that'll be a running clock. Over Winnemac. Pioneer over Winnemac, yeah. Hand off up the middle, goes nowhere, and they're going to push the line back, but they'll give him forward progress to the original line of scrimmage. It'll bring up second and ten. As that was... I couldn't tell, was that Harmon? I thought it might have been Gerald, number four. Okay. Either way, no, no gain. So second and ten. Zebras with a great penetration there and push that pile before it really got anywhere to go. Play clock down to seven. Ebbinghaus now to the line, up under center. Man split to the far side. Looks to throw. Quick slant out to the flat, and it's incomplete. Probably too quick of a throw as... The intended receiver was not even ready to catch it. So uh, stop the clock with 5.09 to go here in the third quarter. 35-6, Zebras lead. 
Randy and Val, glad you could join us. Coming up tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock, Coach's Corner from the Giant FM studios. We'll start with Coach Ron Schaefer, and we'll pre uh, talk about tonight's game. We'll preview next week's game. And then we'll move on to Winnemax Josh Burgess, cast in comment head coach Chris Ulrich, uh, Austin Faust of the Call for Cavaliers, and Joe Grant of the North Miami Warriors. And first timeout of the second Boy, half belongs to the Whitco Wildcats. And we'll take a timeout as well. 5.09 to go here in the third quarter. Giant FM, RTC, TV4, 5 to 6 here at Barnhard Field. Randy and Val after the Whitco timeout. They'll have third down and 10 with 5.09 remaining on the Fulton County Solid Waste District scoreboard. Don't trash our future. Please recycle. We're going to split out Gerald to this near side. Evan House up under center. Evan House drops, flushed out of the pocket, rolls to his left. Here comes a penalty flag thrown up the middle or down the sideline. It's complete, oh, but I think it's coming back because that was a beautiful pass by Evan House. Hold against the Wildcats. Great throw by Ebbing House, an even better catch out there by Harmon. Little hold as they flushed him out of the pocket. Ebbing House has got a uh, pretty good future ahead of him as a six foot sophomore. He's going to cause some teams problems in the next couple of years as he gets even better and better. So after the timeout, or after the penalty marker, and we'll take it back into Whitco territory as the ball's marked at the 48-yard line of the Wildcats. Third and forever. Again, you think about the history of Whitco football. I mean, they've been known for really big linemen and usually one or two great playmakers, speedy guys yeah. on the outside. This is, again, they're in, a, they're in much better shape than they were two years ago. That was kind of the, the low point. That was ground zero. No, that was... There's nowhere to go but up after that game. They're, but again, you've got to get, they're, they're starting to get better. And Ebbinghaus is part of that. So here it is up the middle, Ebbinghaus, and it's intercepted. Intercepted by the Zebras. And a throw over the middle. And the Zebras will take over first and Let's 10. Let's see, was that Brand Beck who got that? or No, that was Bailey. Yeah, that was Ethan Bailey, Bailey. with a second interception Ethan in as many weeks. So the Zebras will take over at their own 44-yard line after the interception. So Whitco totally 360 there as they look to have a great throw down the sidelines and then a penalty, and now they throw the yeah. interception. Part of Ebbinghaus is he's got to get more comfortable in the pocket. He's actually more comfortable on bootlegs. Zebras fumble the ball. Carlton Pollock will keep it, but he's going to be knocked backwards, and he loses it on the way down and end up picking it back up, and the Zebras will lose a couple here on this one. Zebras starting to get a little sloppy here with the ball. Yeah, the the time out. is on the exchange. Pollock comes up limping, and he'll be helped to the sidelines. I'm going to guess he probably got rolled up on in that. Well, that means Coach Schaefer will go to the backup and Mitchell Clark. Mitchell Clark, a 5'9 freshman. We saw him back in week one in the second half. And as the Zebras open up a big lead there in the first half, he got some quality playing time. And now... Under the lights here with the 35-6 lead and four and a half to go in the third. Clark now up under center. Another fumble. Clark picks it up. Clark will roll around the right side. Boy, with that center to quarterback exchange right now is causing the Zebras some havoc. Because if, if you watch the RTC replay yeah. from when... Carson got hurt. That was where that exchange was, a miss, miss exchange there. And then you bring in the backup quarterback, the JV quarterback, and right off the bat, a miss exchange in this one. Got to clean those things up, mm -hmm. especially as you move forward. And with Pollock, you know, is it going to be a tape job or is it going to be is it something more serious? 
Christina taking a look at Carson's left leg. Of course, Pollock is also the punter. Yeah. If it were to come to that. And penalty markers thrown. But the Zebras get a timeout first. Timeout Zebras with 3.38 to go here in the third quarter. You're listening to Giant FM Sports on RTC TV Ford Field as the Zebras burn a timeout. And probably not a bad timeout on Coach Schaefer's part. Uh, make sure you got a new quarterback in. Uh, you had a miss uh, handle of the ball to start with on his first possession in. So just settle the troops down and uh, get everybody on the right page. Clark up under, Mitchell Clark up under center. Fumble again. Picked up and then stripped from his hands. Did Whitco get it? They did. The Whitco Wildcats finally get one as the Zebras fumbled three times in a row on the exchange from center to quarterback. And that was uh, Colton Gerald who recovered the fumble. So the Zebra defense put back into work here. As the Whitco Wildcats have it now, first and 10 from the Zebra 42. Thirty-five six, three thirty-four to go here in this third quarter. Third quarter seems to take a while here. It's all been played uh, basically between the 50-yard uh, line and the 40-yard line. So Evan House up under center. Man in motion, Evan House steps back to throw. He's got pressure. Here comes Clark. Can't force him out of the pocket. He'll tuck it this time. Evan House heads out of bounds, and he'll stop the clock with 3.26 to go. And Evan House looks up here to pick up about seven, eight yards. We'll see how they mark him out of bounds. They are going to mark it at about the 34-yard line, so a good seven-yard pickup for Evan House on the scramble. And it'll be second down and three. Again, he's better on the move than he is when he's in the pocket. And they didn't contain him. He was able to make a play. Clock stops. 326. Here in this third. 34 to 6. Up under center, Ebbinghouse. Fakes the handoff, rolls to the near side, throws it out to the flat. It's caught by Harmon. Harmon breaks one tackle. Harmon still on his feet, going to be brought down about the 10 yard line. And it appears first and goal now for the Wildcats from the 10. Evan House flushed out of the pocket, rolls to his left, throws it, and it's going to be wide open, complete touchdown. Whitco Wildcats with the 258 mark in the third. Did you catch who that was? That was Friel. Friel, okay. Ebbing House to Friel. And again, just an outstanding play. I mean, 10 yard pass. Heisey was bothering Ebbing House, but Ebbing House moved his feet well. The last PAT was uh, blocked by Rochester. And they will attempt. Looks like they're going to go for two here. So they'll huddle up with 14 as the coaching staff decides to go for two after the 10-yard pass from Ebbinghaus to Friel. Here's Ebbinghaus up under center. Ebbinghaus. Flags fly, and around the right side goes Friel, but I believe it's not going to count as a couple different flags. I think one of them is going to be a face mask on Rochester. And the other one from the far side. Will they offset? We'll do it again. We'll see. Officials talk it over. Ball start against Whitco. And personal foul face mask against Rochester. They offset. And we'll try it again. So we'll try the two-point conversion again as Whitco will regroup on the far sideline. And they'll try to cut this 
Lee down to 20. It's the first time they'd come out in an eye and then they get called for an illegal formation. So, uh, they'll come to the line set. Abby House up under center. Looks like Harmon is not on the field here. No. Abby House fakes the handoff, rolls to his left, flushed out of the pocket, throws it up in the air, and it's going to be intercepted. And the two point conversion, no good. And so the Zebras have a 35 to 12 lead here with 258 to go in the third quarter. Giant FM and RTC TV for Val, how'd they do it? Three plays, 42 yards, took just 36 seconds off the clock. Trevor Friel with a 10 yard pass from Crew Ebbinghaus. The pass failed, it was actually intercepted by Maddox Jewell, so the two point conversion failed. Rochester leads Whitco 35 12 with 258 to go in the third quarter. Zebras will get the ball back on the Odell Lumber kickoff. And three minutes to go here in the third quarter. We'll see what the offense will have. And will it be Pollock or will it be Clark? We'll see here momentarily. Here is the kickoff. Harmon on the kickoff. Kicks it to Jewel. Maddox Jewel from the 20. Jewel across the field. Goes to the other side and crosses the 40. Finally going to be brought down near the 40. And the Zebras will take over there, first and 10. Randy and Val, glad you could join us here tonight. The Zebras on the road next two weeks. Next week at Manchester, and then to Walton, Indiana, and the Lewis Cass Kings. As uh, the Kings and the Tigers doing battle tonight. And I still had Peru leading 20 to 17 with about seven minutes to go. Scoring update 24 20. Cast leads now. So somebody's going to be two and one. Whoever wins that game is going to be two and one. With two and a half minutes left. Yeah. And whoever wins that game is going to be two and oh in the conference. Right. Along with the Zebras. Assuming the Zebras on to this 23 point so, lead. Yeah. Just two and a half minutes left yeah. in the game. Yeah. There is Murphy going to motion. A handoff this time right back up the middle to Beck. Beck. Beck breaks through a tackle, couple tackles, still on his feet. Beck down the far sideline. And Brant Beck with a big pickup and Pollock back into the game, but he's still hobbling as he comes skipping over to Coach Schaefer to get that. And he goes back in hobbling. We're going to keep an eye on that and see how Carson does. Couple big weeks coming up on the road here. In the 32 yards for Brent Beck on that play, and that gets him over 100 for the game. Clock continues to roll. We're under two and a half minutes to go here in the third. Pollock, they hand off. Fakes it to shots, gives it off to Murphy on the second man through, and Murphy will pick up a nice run that time as he'll fall forward. Oh, that would have, Murphy just lost his footing. Yeah. Boy, if he had. If he had been able to plant that foot and stay up, boy, it could have gone for a really big gain. As it, as it was, they gained, what, about seven? Seven. Second down and three now. Two minutes to go into third. Ball is down inside the red zone. The Zebras inside the red zone brought to you by Rochester Glass. Pollock up under center. Pollock takes his time. Now he'll fake it to shots again. Give us to Murphy. Murphy again. Pretty much the same play as he goes around the left side. He's down near the 10-yard line, and that'll be another Steve Moore agency first down. And the Zebras will have it first and goal. So the Zebras knocking on the door again, answering right back from the Evan House to Freel touchdown pass. 40 yards rushing for Kai Murphy today and just five carries. Eight yards a carry, you'll take that. Good night for yeah. Kai Murphy. Beck goes in motion this time. Right back up the middle. This one's Shotzi, and Shotzi's in the end zone. Kale Shots with a 10-yard run. 111 mark. Shots making the best of his moment to shine. Well, again, they send, they lined up Brand back at the halfback position there, sent him in motion, and that uh, drew the Whitco defend, defender's attention, then ran a trap up the middle. Nice 
nice work. Rainey and in for the PAT. The offense, even with a hobbled Carson Pollock, operates a lot better when he's out there. Here's the kick by Rainey. It is up and good. So now the Zebras take a 42-12 to lead as they get that point back that they just gave to the Whitco Wildcats on the Fulton County Solid Waste District scoreboard. 1-11 left. Here in the third quarter, Giant FM and RTC TV. Right down Ford. the field with a hobbling Carson Pollock and Val, the Rochester Ford scoring drive. Five plays, 57 yards, took just 141 off the clock. Kale shots with the 10 yard touchdown run. Uh, Davis Reaney with the PAT, and Rochester leads Whitco 42 to 12 with 111 to go in the third quarter. A final from Walton, Indiana. The Cass Kings defeat the Peru Tigers 24 to 20. Here's the Odell Lumber kickoff taken on the left side. That's going to be taken by Hunter Long, and he brings it back just shy of the 40-yard line. So the Woodco Wildcats will have one minute and seven seconds remaining here in the third quarter. And the Zebra defense back out on the field. First and 10 for the Zebras. Or excuse me, for the Whitco Wildcats. We'll see if Riley Harmon comes in in this possession or not. He went out injured earlier. Don't see him yet. Still on the sideline is Harmon. Northwestern leads Southwood 21 to 10. 2.50 to go in the third quarter. Ebbing House hands it off up the middle. Goes nowhere. And that was 24. That was Cox. Ethan Bailey and Brant Beck in on the stop. 45 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Zebras with a 30 point lead. 42-12. This clock starts to wind down here on this third quarter. Whitco out of the huddle with four on the play clock. Ebbinghaus hands it. Nope, keeps it himself. Ebbinghaus looking to throw, looking, still looking. Now he'll go ahead and run it out of bounds as he'll pick up, appears to be about five yards and stops the clock with 14 and a half seconds to go before the end of the third. Yeah, he heard the footsteps of Xavier Vance, and he said, I'm going to get out of get about, get out of bounds here and not uh, live for another day. I'll take my five <laughs> yards. So a five-yard pickup, second down and five now, for, or third down and five. But as Ebbinghaus, as he gets more experience, he's going to just get better in terms of when should I run, yeah. When should I throw on the run yeah, before I get to the line of scrimmage? We're talking about a sophomore yeah. still. Uh. Ebbing House, and there's a penalty marker. I think you could choose just about anybody on that one. <laughs> nope, they got a timeout first. All right, Winco escapes with a timeout before the penalty marker. We'll take one as well. You're listening to Zebra Football. Giant FM and RTC TV4. And up at the end of the game, we'll choose the in your hardware player of the game. Well, a final score to report, Alexandria has defeated Elwood 47-12. to Okay. Both of those teams in Rochester section. Alexandria now 3-0. So here is Ebbinghaus, probably the final play of the third quarter. Ebbinghaus pitches it back. That pitch goes to Cox. Cox goes around the left side. And... He is kept in bounce, and that will do it for the third quarter. At the end of three complete here at Barnhart Field, the Zebras lead it 42-12 on the Fort County Solid Waste District scoreboard. Back with the fourth and final quarter after this, you're listening to Zebra Football, Giant FM, and RTC TV4. as the Whitco Wildcats will punt it away. And here is Harmon to punt. Harmon, a high punt this time. The Zebras will let it bounce, and 
It'll bounce down near the 10 yard line. And that's where the Zebras will take over with 11.51 to go here in this fourth and final quarter. Leading 42 to 12. 45 yard punt by Harmon. No return. Zebras let that one roll. So the Zebras will have it now with 90 yards to go and a 30 point lead. In Coach's Corner coming your way tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock on Giant FM. So I hope you can join us for that. Talk to area coaches. Carson Pollock back in, up under center. Beck at the halfback spot. And a man goes in motion is Murphy. They fake to Murphy. They go right back up the middle. And that is Shots. Shots with another great run and another Steve Moore agency first down. And here comes the second platoon and a wholesale changes for the Zebras. Mitchell Clark coming in. He'll lead the attack here now as the starters done for the evening. I don't know who the backup center is, but Mitchell might just be more comfortable getting yeah. the snap from the backup than from James Gardner. And that is uh, Grant McLaughlin, the freshman, is in that center. So, Clark. And it looks like a false start on the Zebras. Not a good start to the second squad. And it's like possibly Barrett Brown is... He was kind of looking at the sideline. So it'll bring yeah. up first and 15. I, I think that's a no-no. Yeah. If you commit the penalty, don't, 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 don't look, look at the sideline. <laughs> that's just making a bad situation worse. Mitchell Clark up under center. First and 15. Clock rolls under 11. The handoff is up the middle. We'll have to wait for the pile to unfold to see who had it. That's shots. Dots gets it out near the 20. Picks up a couple there after the penalty. So it'll be second and 14 now for the Zebras. Ten and a half minutes to go here in this fourth and final quarter. Mitchell pitches it back. That is... Chapman, I believe. Chapman with the pitch. He gets it out across the 25. Nice job reading his blocks by Alejandro Chapman. Going to bring up third and manageable here, about five yards. Here is Clark. Gives it up again to Chapman. Chapman behind Clark. Gets uh, first down and more as he's going to be knocked out of bounds near the 45-yard line. Even a little stiff arm there from yeah. Alejandro Chapman. Nice. Nice as we take a look at the instant replay. And Mitchell Clark, Mitchell Clark, a lead block for his running back. Yeah. Get a little block right there. Okay, well, it wasn't much of a block, but still. Hey, he was in the way. He was a quarter, yeah. He gets, a, he gets credit. First and ten. Quarterbacks are held to a lower stand. First down. Steve Moore agency first down. Fumble balls loose. Picked back up by Clark. And the Zebras will lose a couple on that one. Couldn't tell if it was on the exchange. Quarterback center exchange or if it was on the handoff. Take a look here. Looked like it was on the exchange. So it'll be a loss of uh, a yard. Second down and 11 now for Rochester. 9.40 to go here in the contest. Mitchell Clark brings the squad up under center. Grayson Miller is in halfback. Pitch back again to uh, Chapman. Chapman breaks one tackle, gets out of bounds into uh, Whitco territory as he's going to be marked down at the 44-yard uh, line. And another Steve Moore agency first down. That was well blocked as well. Chapman doing a great job. 
keeping his balance, staying low. Absorbing that first hit and just keeps his keeps going. In a 14. Chapman gets it again. Chapman right behind Clark. Chapman knocked out of bounds inside the 40 near the 36-yard line. 37 as well, though, Market. So give him four, or give him six. It'll be second down and four. You could give him seven, I guess. Let me give him seven. We'll call it second and three. 9-22. When the Zebras have gone to Manchester in the past, they've had some weird games there. Yeah, there has been. And going way back in history. Yeah. <laughs> Weird, Ball goes up the middle this time. Weird weather games, weird, some high-scoring games, some low-scoring games. Third down and about one. I think there's probably some people in this uh, press box right now that would agree to uh, yeah, some crazy games at Manchester. <laughs> you never know what you're going to get there. And they give him the forward progress, and they give him another Steve Moore first down. Number 20, I don't have him in my roster. 20 for Rochester. You don't either. We'll have to figure out who that mask player is. Now we get a timeout in the Witka Wildcats. Want one as well? We'll take it. We'll be back after this. You're listening to Zebra Football, Dine FM, RTC, TV. 8.51 remaining here from Barnhart Field. Randy and Val, glad you could join us. Zebra's 42-12 to 12 lead here as Mitchell Clark up under center. Aiden Wilson in the fullback. Pitch is again out to Chapman. Chapman still on his feet. Going to be knocked out of bounds inside to 30. They're going to mark him down at the 26-yard line. Another seven-yard pickup. It'll be second down and three. Chapman listed as a 5, 750-pound freshman. Doing some pretty good running here. Val, don't forget, we got the In Yards Hardware player of the game to choose here in a little bit. Nice blocking there. I wanted to give a shout-out to Jacer Garrett. Ball's loose. Picked up by Caleb Tyler. I mean, they're, he's the right tackle, and they're running it on his side most every play. So I want to give a shout-out to Jacer. But again, another awkward. Again, that ball was just dropped by the back. That was not on the quarterback. Third down and a five now for the Zebras. Mitchell Clark up under center. The pitch is to Chapman. Breaks it through as Whitco just blew through that line. And Colton Gerald almost met Chapman before he got the ball. That might be in Chapman's most impressive run yet. I mean, he had a guy right in his face. Did he get the first down? He did. He did. Another Steve Moore agency first down for the Zebras. Under eight minutes to go. Ball sitting at the 24-yard line. First and 10 for the Zebras. And goes in motion. That is Grayson Miller. He gets the handoff. Miller goes to the far side, and before he can turn it upfield too much, he's brought down. But in the three-yard pickup, it'll be second down and seven. That was kind of a jet, which the Zebras haven't run the jet yeah. that much. Uh, but put that, put that on film. <laughs> Zebra JV lost to Tippecanoe Valley 38 to nothing back on Tuesday. So a lot of these kids were just on this field three days ago. Yeah. And I think trying to atone and trying to put some, put some good stuff on film for the coaches to, to look at here. Miller, excuse me, that is Chapman again. Chapman, a couple of nice moves, breaking through the tackles, tries to go the other direction. And he cuts it back, and he's going to be down near the 10-yard line and another Steve Moore agency first down. And it's going to be first and goal from the 10 for the Zebras. Inside the red zone, brought to you by Rochester Glass. Big run that time by Chapman. He's 65 yards rushing in this drive for Chapman. Whitco has had one offensive snap this quarter, and they punted on it. 
There he is. Look, hands it off, and that is to Wilson. Wilson goes up the middle to the left side, and he's going to get down to about the. Where are they going to mark him? Seven. So it'll be second and goal now from the seven. 6.15 and rolling here in this fourth and final quarter. Zebras lead 42 to 12. Mitchell Clark out of the huddle. Brings the squad set up under center. Hands off again to the left side to Wilson. Wilson will penetrate and looks like he'll pick up a couple more. He's going to be there at the five, so it'll be third and goal from the five now. Give him a two-yard pickup. Five thirty-seven and counting here in this fourth and final quarter. Mitchell Clark up under center. Takes his time. Pitch back now to Chapman. Chapman almost drugged down to the back. A flag comes and into the end zone. Touchdown. Well, we are going to have a penalty marker, and we'll probably decline that. Yeah, they're going to take it on the on the kickoff. So the Zebras will go for one. Oh, my. Yeah. <laughs> that is an amazing run. I mean, he is... Face man's nearly yanked off. My gosh. So five-yard run for Chapman at the 518 mark here in the fourth. I mean, he took that Whitco defender for a went on the merry-go-round on the face mask. <laughs> he shook him off. That was crazy. Rainy in for the point after. Pollock the holder. And there's a jump by. Whitco. And the Zebras will try it again. So the point after will attempt again. So we reset everything and uh, Davis Rainey again for the PAT. Snap is back, kick is up, and it is good. And so with that, the Zebras push it to now a 49-12 to 12 lead. 4.26 to go here in this fourth quarter. Back with more after this, Giant FM and RTC TV4. So with 4.26 to go here in the fourth, we will have a running clock for the final four and a half. So Davis Rainey will get ready to kick away here on the Odell Lumber kickoff. Your locally owned building supplier. Stop out to Odell Lumber. Odell Guns inside Odell Lumber running a special this month, extending their August specials. So stop out and see them as hunting season's just around the corner. Here is the kick by Davis Rainey. Three men back deep. And that is now a final. Tippecanoe Valley has defeated Hammond Morton 35-23. Hunter Long has the football. He'll take it from about the 10. He'll bring it back to just outside the 20-yard line. And the clock will roll. So the Zebras will move to 2-0 in the Three Rivers Conference. 2-1 overall. Whitco will drop to 0 and 2 in the conference, 0 and 3 overall. Typical New Valley at Knox next Friday. Okay, that'll be a big I one. I mean, yeah. I mean, you, you wanna obviously you wanna listen to us, watch <laughs> us. You don't wanna go to that game, but uh, <laughs> Rochester will be at Manchester. Yeah, you wanna go to. All right, Val. About another minute or so, we're gonna need the. Inyerts Hardware Player of the Game for nearly 50 years. Inyerts has been there to help you with all your hardware needs. So we're going to put pressure on you. Got, oh, you got, man, you're putting a lot of pressure on me because a lot of guys played yeah. well, but I'm going to go with Maddox Jewell. I thought I really liked what I saw from Maddox Jewell tonight, a 40-yard reception, a 19-yard run, intercepted a pass on a two-point conversion, had a nice, couple nice kickoff returns. He's my guy. But I could have gone a lot of different ways. Here's the pitch, and that one goes out to Hunter Long around the right side as Hunter Long 
making a pretty good run for himself as he'll get a first down for the Whitco Wildcats. And in, trying to get the number because I don't believe that is Ebbinghaus. Let's see who is quarterbacking. It's not. For the Wildcats. Get that number for you here in just a second. Whitco up under center. Appears to be number 27. You have a 27? We'll get that. We'll clarify that here in a minute. <laughs> Tough to see. But that pass was incomplete, so it'll be a second down and 10 with 2.15 to go. I, I thought it was first it was an 8. Was that an 8? 28. Uh, 25 breaks the huddle. That's Panka. Was it 87? Carter Imhoff? Well, it could be. Interesting number for, and it is, 87. Okay. And the pitch back comes over to uh, Long. Long with a nice carry. Picks up about five yards. And you're right, Val, it is 87. Carter Imhoff, a 5'9 freshman. Nice tackle there by Derek Wortley. 90 seconds remaining here in this contest. Teaching moment for the younger kids here. As Imhoff up under center. Imhoff for the Wildcats. Pitch back to Long. Long around the right side. Long cuts it back upfield. Long breaking through the Zebra defense. Slicing through it like butter. And another first down for the Whitco Wildcats. Clock is under a minute. The second squad of the Wildcats looking to uh, get in the end zone in the next 45 seconds. Well, again, this program is making progress. Yeah. Um. M. Hoof, again up under center. Fakes the handoff, looking to throw. Here comes pressure. He throws it up in the air, and it's going to be short and incomplete. And with 30 seconds and counting, that could do it. Plus, the Wicco Wildcats can hurry up and get back to the line. Some names. Uh, Eliezer Diaz is now in for Rochester. Marco Orduño Rodriguez is in there. Nice to see Marco out there. Trevor Copeland is playing for the Zebras. They will try one more play down Ch to 10. Uh, Chapman's playing safety. Emhoff pitches it back. And that is Long. Long with the ball again. Long running to the near side. Trying to sliver through. Finally going to be brought down, and that's going to do it the final tonight. The Zebras win it 49 to 12 over the Whitco Wildcats. We'll be back with the post game show brought to you by the Tire Store after this three minute timeout. You're listening to Zebra Football. They win it on the Fulton County Solid Waste District scoreboard. 49 12, Giant FM and RTC TV4. can't make it over there, don't uh, fret. We'll be there, so I hope you can join us for that. And then the next week, the Zebras are still on the road for back-to-back -back weeks as they travel to Walton, Indiana and take on Lewis Cass. Cass Kings tonight beat the uh, Peru Tigers by a final of 24-20. to 20. So a big win for Cass uh, over the Peru Tigers tonight to uh, get their third win of the season. As we're joined now by Zebra head coach Ron Schaefer, this coach's interview being brought to you by the Fulton County Community Foundation. We're giving grows. 49-12, Zebras win it tonight. Coach, congratulations. Uh, a nice win, a nice bounce back uh, for the kids. But uh, 
I know it's still week three, but I could sense a little frustration on some minor things and maybe more mental things than anything here, especially in the first half. Yeah, we, you know, I don't know. It's, it's hard to evaluate with looking back at the, you know, the film and knowing for sure, uh, you know, some things in execution um, that we've got to definitely shore up. Um, you know, our coverage wasn't so good on the play action, um, you know, and they... We hadn't seen him run boot, but obviously we've defended boot for, yeah. uh, you know, against ourselves even. So, uh, you know, that's a little frustrating. Um, putting the ball on the ground too much. Um, yeah, we bring in a backup quarterback, but that backup quarterback, he doesn't get reps. He doesn't get very many, And but you got to be able to come in and take a snap and hand the ball off. And so, you know, we got to get better at that. Um, Two false let, starts again yeah, tonight. Two false starts. Can't let the quarterback get outside of the pocket. Um, can't break down in coverage. we got to communicate coverage. So, um, you know, tonight I don't know if we stepped forward. Uh, we just kind of maintained. And if you're not moving forward, you're moving backwards, in my opinion. So, uh, you know, we're not going to dwell on a lot of the negatives. We're going to just make sure we get them corrected for next week. A lot of different guys touching the uh, touching the uh, the ball tonight, and it was nice to see. Uh, we had uh, Beck for around 112 yards on the ground. Uh, Alejandro Chapman coming in the fourth quarter. We had him for 70 yards just there in the fourth quarter. So sure. uh, uh, nice to see those kids coming in.